Word made flesh. Uh, that is one of the most powerful concepts for me through Scripture for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, uh, just really what it is. You know, if you open the Bible to Genesis 1, we see uh, that God made heaven and earth. He speaks and what is physical happens. The earth comes into form. The, the Word of God, God is spirit, it says in John 4, 24. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and truth. But if we go back, the spirit speaks and the material happens. It's formed. I also think of Ecclesiastes 12, 1 and 7. It says, remember your creator before the dust, us, return to the earth we came from and the spirit returns to God who gave it. So, so we have this God spirit who, who speaks and what is physical happens. And then uh, in this life, we have our story. It, it unfolds. God makes us in his image, Genesis 127. We, we use our God likeness. Uh, you know, Jesus himself, John 10, 34 said, you are all sons of God. And he's quoting um, Psalm 82, 6. He, he's quoting the psalmist. And, and Jesus is saying that there is Godness in you. And, and we were made in the image of God, Genesis 1.27. We used our God-likeness to compete with God, to rise up and, and reach for more, more knowledge, more, more power. Genesis 3, 5 to 6, we, we reached for more knowledge. Ecclesiastes 1.18 says, with the increase of knowledge is the increase of sorrow. Sure enough, uh, through reaching to be more than what we were made to be, death rushed in. With the, the, the sting of death, which is sin, it says in 1 Corinthians 15, it rushed in and has taken us over. We die physically. We die. But also the, 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 the spirit of death pervades life, our thinking, our, our bodies, our health, our business transactions, our relationship to money, our relationships to people, our thought life. This, this rejection of God pervaded everything that was created by God and and we we have a story that has unfolded because of that and the story is this God who who spoke and from his word creation became God spoke himself into that creation and the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us John 1 14 the word became flesh. Now this, this act of, of God speaking himself into creation was a, a humble, uh, it was a humble thing. Philippians 2, 6-7 says he, being equal with God, he, he did not consider that equality something to be grasped, but, but set it aside, became nothing. For, for God to breathe himself into that which he created and to become flesh was, as it were, to become Nothing, the Word became flesh and made His dwelling amongst us. That, uh, uh, we see that in the beginning was the Word, John 1, 1 to 5. The Word was life. And, and, and then verse 14, He became flesh and made His dwelling among us. So when we think of what salvation is, when we think of our lives as, as being in the palm of His hand and as uh, being sustained and lived in his word that that is the truth we we often and that's why we're admonished in second corinthians 10 3 to 5 to take captive thoughts and make them subject to christ now here's what we typically do we typically live this life as if it's the more real and we take captive christ and we make him subject to the rhythms and the infrastructure of this life. Like, the, this is what's real. Christ will be a church service on Sunday morning. Then after we do our religious things, we'll get back to, you know, let's get real. We, we you know, Christ and life and God's spirit, that's all, you know, well and good and we need to, we need to dress up and, and pay homage. But then we get back to what's real. It's the flip. It is the flip side. The Spirit of God came first. He spoke 
and our life exists in his word. It says in Hebrews 1, 3, the sun is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. We exist in the spirit and the word of God. John 6, 63, Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. Colossians 1, 15 to 20, it says, he is before all things and in him all things hold together. Our lives, the real real, the pure real, the unadulterated, the unrebellious real, that which is going to endure for all time, that is the holy word of God that is, as it were, that which holds us like a hand. Our physical reality is less real than the spiritual word that sustains us. That is why Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5, we don't take Jesus captive and relegate him to a Sunday morning. No, we take Monday through Sunday captive and we subject them to Christ. We take our thoughts and we don't try and fit Christ in. No, we try to take our thoughts and fit them into the spirit and the truth that is Christ. John 17, 3 says, now this is eternal life, to know the Father and to know the Son. To know God is to be in what is most real. That, that road of faith is the road that God has marked out for us now to access the truer truth. The things we see not with our eyes, but with our heart. 2 Corinthians 4.18, so we fix our eyes and not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. We fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. What is unseen is eternal. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we live by faith, not by sight. Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Listen, I end with this. There was a time when God walked in the cool of the evening. He, what was physical was spirit filled, was as pure as, as the spirit that breathed it. That was Eden. There was a time when God was in what was 